It has long been said that art and suffering have some sort of a connection to one another, and these artists and their works might prove just that. We are diving into some of the most renowned artists in the world today, but we are also talking about the struggles and hurdles that they faced while or after creating this art. I am your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky, and we are getting a little dark today as we dive into the top 10 scary times artists went insane after creating their masterpiece. Starting off at our number 10 spot, we have Michelangelo. Perhaps one of the most most famous artists in history, as well as my favorite Ninja Turtle, Michelangelo's hand is said to have been touched by both genius, but also madness. He's the creator of one of the most treasured art pieces as he painted the Sistine Chapel. While this is his most coveted piece, he also produced a mass amount of work throughout his life, all with meticulous detail. This has led some historians to speculate that he may have struggled with some form of obsessive compulsive disorder. Throughout his works, many have also drawn conclusions that he may may have been severely depressed, potentially with symptoms of bipolar disorder as well. It is said that Michelangelo would often shut himself away for days at a time while he works, oftentimes forgetting to eat or change his clothes. We can get a glimpse into the life of Michelangelo, both from his own personal notes that survived after his passing, as well as through other art from the time that depicts him. One really striking piece that is left from Michelangelo is a note that he wrote to his father, in which he is said to have written, quote, I lead a miserable existence and wreck not of life nor honor that is of this world. I live wearied by stupendous labors and beset by a thousand anxieties, and thus I lived for some 15 years now and never an hour's happiness have I had. In our number 9 spot today we have Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe is best known for her struggle and work to get women's art the recognition it deserves, and she really was one of the pioneers for this kind of representation. She would become one of the United States most celebrated artists, but it didn't come without obstacles. While she passed away in 1986 at the age of 98 years old, her work, legacy, and message continues to live on. One of the most well-known stories about Georgia, however, happened in 1932. It is said that at that time, Georgia was working on a mural for the Radio City Music Hall, but she had unfortunately fallen very behind on the important project due to factors that were completely beyond her control. The stress and pressure of this, along with other things she was dealing with in her personal life, caused Georgia Georgia to suffer a nervous breakdown or a mental health crisis. It is said that she became very depressed, and some even claimed that she became agoraphobic, she stopped eating, and that she struggled to not cry. Luckily, Georgia would later be hospitalized and would receive the help that she really needed at that point in time. It took some healing and a two year break, but she was able to finally rekindle her love for making art. In our number 8 spot today, we have Mark Rothko. Mark was born in Latvia, but he grew up in Portland, Oregon, and spent much of his adult life as an abstract painter living in New York City. He is said to have often suffered through bouts of depression while also struggling with a dependency on alcohol. Many people have explained that witnessing him paint is a masterpiece, just like the art itself. It is said that it is sort of like a mystical, meditative experience. It is said that in early 1968, Mark was diagnosed with a mild aortic aneurysm but that he ignored the advice of his doctor and continued to drink and smoke. He avoided exercise and didn't have the best of diets. A friend of Mark's, Dor Ashton, is said to have referenced Mark at the time as being quote, highly nervous, thin, and restless. Sadly, on February 25th, 1970, Mark would be found by his assistant lying dead in his kitchen in front of the sink. Unfortunately, it appears that at the age of 66, Mark took his own life. It is clear that despite the colorful and joyful pieces that Mark was creating, he clearly was facing a multitude of his own personal struggles that one wouldn't see in his art. His story and legacy lives on as he is considered one of the most influential modern abstract expressionists in history. In our number 7 spot today we have Lewis Wayne. Lewis is quite well known for his paintings of the feline form as he had these interesting anthropomorphic paintings of cats. It is said that later in his life Lewis began to suffer from a type of schizophrenia which began to manifest as distrust and hostility hostility towards his loved ones. Prior to his diagnosis, however, Lewis was already struggling with his mental health after the passing of his wife to breast cancer. It is said that, as one can imagine, this caused Lewis to become very depressed, and suddenly his art was his main focus. After being diagnosed with schizophrenia in 1924, his sisters felt as though they could not cope with his erratic and potentially violent behavior, and they had him committed to a mental facility. Since Lewis's passing, many psychologists have reviewed his work and explained that you can see the progression of his struggle with his illness unfolding in the abstract nature of his painting.
paintings. In our number 6 spot today we have Francisco Goya. Francisco and his art was presented to the world at an interesting point in time. He was an artist that represented both the old masters, but also the new modern era of Spanish painting and art. His romantic paintings are reminiscent of greats like Picasso, but he also shows us things like loneliness, fear, and alienation. And it is these works that are said to give us an insight into the mind of the artist. It is said that Francisco began experiencing difficulties both physically and mentally. These symptoms are said to include things like hearing voices, losing balance, progressive deafness, but at the same time experiencing tinnitus. There are many people who, using these symptoms, have tried to diagnose the late great artist, but it is unlikely that we may ever know exactly what was plaguing him during his life. In our number 5 spot today we have The Anguished Man. This is actually a painting that, while we know the story behind it, the person who created it remains a mystery. The painting itself depicts exactly what the name would suggest, a man looking like he is in great pain and suffering. The painting is apparently made of a mix of paint and blood, and it is said that the creator ended up taking his own life after making it. While this painting has reached a level of fame because of the fact that the current owner of it claims that it is haunted, the story behind it seems to be all too common for artists. The art itself is definitely a representation of a dark state of mind. In our number 4 spot today we have Edvard Munch. Most famous for the incredibly iconic image of the scream, Edvard is known for his avant-garde style. It is said that the idea for the image came to him when he was out for a walk during the sunset on a fjord overlooking Oslo. He is said to have explained that as the sun set, it turned the sky blood red. In response to this scene, he said, quote, I stood there trembling with anxiety, and I sensed an endless scream passing through nature. The painting is said to be an example or representation of human anxiety in the modern world, which it seems as though the artist was quite familiar with. Perhaps this is why the image is so universal and well revered, because it's something that so many people can relate to, whether consciously or not. It is said that the older Edward got, the more his anxiety had a hold on him and began creeping into his life and manifesting in different ways. It is said that he suffered from anxiety, but that he also had hallucinations. He had terrifying nightmares and even visions of macabre situations which can certainly be seen in his art. While at one point he did seek treatment and help for his struggles, and it did help in some ways, he also wrote in his diary, quote, My fear of life is necessary to me, as is my illness. They are indistinguishable from me, and their destruction would destroy my art. In our number 3 spot today we have William Uttermolen. The story of this artist directly relates to his struggle and battle with Alzheimer's. In 1995, William was diagnosed with a disease, which is a degenerative disease that affects memory loss and other cognitive abilities. It also targets the part of our brain that we use for visualizing things, which is important to William's story. William is best known for a series of self-portraits he created as his disease progressed. William's self-portraits obviously reflect a lot of what is going on in his mind during some of the last years of his life, and because of how it affected his brain, we can see how different the paintings get throughout the years. This series of paintings is actually sometimes used as study material for medical students because it does such a wonderful job at portraying something that can't always be understood fully with just words. I think William left the world with something very sad, but also beautiful, poignant, and very important. In our number 2 spot today we have Nicholas de Sale. During the 1950s, Nicholas rose to be quite an influential artist of his generation, and he produced work that has gone on to create quite a legacy for himself. He is known for painting classic landscapes in a highly abstract way, although his art later in life would focus on more traditional French imagery. It is said that throughout his life he often suffered through bouts of depression, and it was an ongoing struggle for him. It is said that he even moved to the south of France in search of peace and tranquility, but sadly, this wasn't enough. It is said that after a negative meeting with an art critic, Nicholas decided that he simply just couldn't deal with his struggles anymore, and that he had had enough with his life. This led to him sadly taking his own life. In our number 1 spot today we have Vincent Van Gogh. Van Gogh is likely the most famous example of an artist that suffered with their mental illness, although as evidenced by this list, there truly is no shortage of suffering artists. Vincent is said to have struggled with both anxiety and depression in his life, and at one point he even wrote, I put my heart and my soul into my work and lost my mind in the process. Van Gogh's work is so iconic and influential to modern art, and he is one of art's most iconic figures, but despite this success, Success and talent, he was struggling greatly. Not just mentally, but he was also not commercially successful during his life. I mean, one of the most famous stories of him is how he cut off a portion.
portion of his own ear with a razor. What was a crazy story that went around the schoolyard is a very clear example of someone who needs help. Van Gogh tragically died at the age of 37 after taking his own life. After his passing is when he became the household name that he is now. His works, although they can show a tortured mind, also show immense talent and brilliance. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. As fans of art and people who have benefited from the works of these artists, it's important for us to feel gratitude for those who continue to persevere throughout and despite their illness and struggles. The work is certainly not forgotten, nor are they. Thanks so much for watching this video. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.